For around the past month, I have scoured Mario RPG for the Switch from top to bottom and went on everything around the internet to find every little small bit of details, facts, and easter eggs that I possibly could to make a video with over 100 details, facts, and easter eggs that I guarantee you did not know all of these for sure. If you do know all these, you're just the Mario RPG master and I commend you. This video took an unbelievably long time to put together. Like I said, it's been in the works for over a month now. So please make sure you show it some love. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and if you learned anything new. Thank you so much for tuning in and let's dive in to the 100 plus facts of Mario RPG. First off, when Mario starts the game and is hanging from his wall, you can actually hit the lamp once you're up to go back to sleep and it will play the Mario World theme song after you complete a level, or at least the jingle at the end. Also the way that he sleeps with the bubble also kind of reminds me of Mario Brothers 2, so that could be a reference too, I guess. In the very first house to the left when you enter Mushroom Kingdom, you can go up the stairs and you'll see a little green boy toad jumping up and down on the bed. If you talk to him, he'll say, do you think if I practice enough could I jump as high as you? And if you actually say no, he will turn around and face the wall and be very upset. It's kind of sad, but it's hilarious. If you tell him sure, he'll actually be very happy and bounce around the bed a lot faster. If you walk past the pink girl toad outside, she'll tell you, look what you're stepping in, stop, and you can't move until you jump, and she'll say, ha, I got you. Yeah, it, it's pretty lame, but it was funny. If you go into Peach's quarters in the castle and go behind the blue chair and click the prompt, you'll find Peach's question mark, question mark, question mark, and then the toad will run over and tell you, hey, you shouldn't be snooping through Peach's things, which is kind of funny. He'll also give you a mushroom to give back whatever it was, but... Uh, I guess your imagination can run wild. You can find one of the toads hiding behind one of the houses in town, and he'll just be hiding from Croco since he's stealing people's things. Once Clay Morton and his bouncing shy guys take over the Mushroom Kingdom, you can actually go back to the house with the bouncing kid toad, and he'll be bouncing on the bed with the shy guy as well. Not really fighting each other or anything, just having a good old time. Yes, you can jump in and fight him if you want, but it's completely optional. And of course, the kid's happy that he's gonna grow up to be like you, and he starts jumping like crazy again. Now, if you go back to Peach's quarters during the Clay Morton event, if you go to talk to the Grey Toad, they'll say that you cannot sleep in Peach's bed. Have some manners. But they will refresh your life, since you can't sleep in it. During battle, the Shy Guys will eventually use an attack called the Lullaby, which will actually play the athletic theme for Super Mario World. And the same theme plays in another remix version in one of the houses in Rosetown that has the little boy with the Geno and the Mario dolls. There is an enemy in the game called Octolot that looks a lot like the Octorok enemy from the Legend of Zelda series. It's funny he's sitting on a swing with two flying shells with bat wings for some reason, but yeah, it's like a Mario Octorok. There's also these bee enemies called buzzers that look an awfully lot like zingers from Donkey Kong Country series. So maybe it's just a coincidence, I, I guess, I mean, it's a bee in a Mario game, they're probably all gonna look like that. There's also some type of Donkey Kong monkey enemy called Gorilla in this game for some reason with chains all over him. I, I don't understand. Maybe Mankey Kong is finally getting punished. When you get to the Lost Forest, there's actually a secret path that you can take in order to get to a room full of chests. First, you want to start off by going to the left and then back down, then make your way back down once again, and then finally go left. It'll take you to a tree stump, which once you jump in, you'll be in a room full of treasure chests. When you go to Yoster Island, which we will be talking about a lot in this video, so stay tuned, but but you can get Yoshi's cookies, which actually allows you to feed Yoshi's and in order to race against Yoshi's and lots of other stuff, once again, that we'll talk about later. But Yoshi's cookie could actually just straight up be a reference to the game Yoshi's Cookie. The Spikester enemy will actually make the Tanuki tail sound from Mario Bros. 3 when he attacks. There is a secret menu code that actually comes from the original game, and once you open up your menu, press 
up, down, right, left, L, R, L, R, B, and you will get a special scene where Toad will pop up on the screen and kind of go over your stats and say, hmm, you put in a secret code, what did it change? And it's kind of just like a funny gag that nothing actually changed. It's just a little Easter egg, if you will. Like this is seriously a thing, try it out for yourself. This one's really hard to miss, but in Booster's Tower, if you go behind the curtains in this section, you actually will come out as an 8-bit sprite Mario and you can move around, jump around and hear the sound, but eventually it will make you run back as your time will run out. There's a room in Booster's Tower that you can actually put Mario's head through one of the portraits and yeah, there's nothing that really happens, but it just looks funny. Eventually you'll get to the top of the tower to Booster's main room and you'll see a box of his toys. And a lot of these toys are references to other things. For instance, there's a Princess Peach doll on top of a Rob toy and Rob is holding a car from Stunt Race FX. There's a Samus toy on the other side of Rob and you have Disc Gun, which is like the Famicom mascot. When you play the little game of keeping away from the Sniffets by running back and forth in the curtain, it will actually play the card theme from Mario Bros. 3. Once you arrive to Marymore, depending on how long it takes you to pick up all Peach's belongings and return them back before the wedding, you will get different kiss scenes depending on how fast it took you to gather those items. Here's what every single one will look like. Did you know Mario can actually be a marriage officiant by walking through the chapel after completing the area and going all the way up to the front and talking to the two at the pew? Once you stand in front of them on the other side, Mario will do some animations and throw his hands up in the air. You can also see the jumping kid from the Mushroom Kingdom that's standing there shaking and if you talk to him, he'll actually run away. I don't know if he has to use the bathroom or something, but he's definitely not interested in this wedding. If you go outside of the chapel to the right side, you'll see a bunch of people getting ready to take a picture and Mario can actually jump into the empty slot in order to pose to take a picture with all the toads. Now going back to the Mushroom Kingdom, eventually you'll find the jumping kid, at least I think it's him, running around the courtyard over and over again. But if you talk to him with Bowser in your party, he'll actually get scared and run into the house, and then back outside if you talk to him inside. In the second area of Star Hill, you'll find a green star to the top left that tells of a wish, and it says, I wish I weren't such a crybaby, which is actually Mello's wish, and he'll actually come out and start yelling and getting mad at Mario for reading his wish. You'll also find another star at the bottom right of an area that says, please let Mallow find his way home, which is from Mallow's parents, and he'll come out and there's a whole cutscene for that as well. In one of the later areas, you'll find a green star on the left side that reads, I want to help out my older brother Mario, which is obviously from Luigi, because he's kind of a scaredy cat and he wants to do something on his own. Which is kind of funny because he eventually will in Luigi's Mansion that comes out years later on the GameCube. If you go to one of the back houses in Seaside Town and go to the second floor, you'll actually find a frog that tells you that he was a tadpole at the Frog Sage his school and that he's graduated and he remembers seeing Mario so that happened very fast. It's hard to say which tadpole it was but I'm guessing one of the ones we talked to. If Mario has a weird status effect that changes his appearance or if he's down, Bowser will actually not throw Mario 
Mario with his toss move, he'll actually get a Mario doll and chuck it at the enemy. When it lands in, you'll find a weird little cloud moving around. If you jump into it, it'll actually take you into a form of a mini boss battle against something called Formless. You have to use a special attack in order to make it appear, and then you'll find out that it's actually an enemy called Gas Ox, which is kind of funny because Bowser actually has a special move that uses a Gas Ox cloud in order to poison his enemies. If you go to the end of Land's End, you'll reach the desert, and there's a blue mouse there. If you try to jump on his head, he said you won't get any coins from me, I'm not a wiggler or a shogun, because you can get coins from them, I'll talk about that a bit more later. There's a lot of weird things that happen in Monstro Town. For instance, there's one room with a bed, and if you go to the little mushroom in the corner and turn the light off, you can actually go to sleep, and three enemies will appear in the room around Mario. Technically, three ghosts. They call themselves the Three Musty Fears, but they're referencing the Three Musketeers. And what they'll actually do is hide three flags around the world in order for you to find for a special medal. I give you some hints as to where to find them, but I can just tell you. The Dry Bones flag is underneath Mario's bed, the Boo flag is at the goal line on Yoster Island, and the Greeper flag is behind the wooden welcome sign in Rose Town. Once you do all that, they will give you the Ghost Medal, which doubles your defense during battle. And what's also really cool is if you take it off or leave it back on and go to sleep, you'll have different dialogue for whether you have it on or off. They'll be like, oh, you're wearing it, or oh, he's not wearing our medal. Back outside in Monstro Town, you might wonder why there's a key on top of one of the cliffs. Well, if you go into the room underneath and keep talking to the thwomp, every time you talk to him, he'll slam the ground. Eventually, after a couple times, he'll slam it so hard that the key falls off and it actually bumps up a little bit inch by inch if you go out and look. But once you pick up the key, it's called the Temple Key. Take this to Bellum's Temple, where right before before you fight Bellum again, there's a giant statue with his head, where you have to hit his tongue in order to drop a scroll. This drop will actually determine if you go to the boss, which is Bellum, or if you go to the secret room. You're looking for the scroll that says, sorry, I'm not accepting visitors at this moment. If you don't get that scroll, just leave the room and come back and try again. Once you get that, take the elevator down and it will actually take you to his secret room, where you can insert his key into the statue in order to remove it. This will reward you with tons of flower tabs, royal syrups, fire bombs, even frog coins. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. In Bean Valley, there's an area full of prana plants and pipes. Let the shy guy water the top prana plant and kill it in order to drop down its pipe, and you'll see a golden chain chomp. You'll probably want to kill him in order to get him out of the way in order to find the secret exit. Jump in the corner of the room to reveal a secret platform that then takes you to the top portion, leading you to a secret part of the map being a casino. Great Guys Casino, one of the bosses from Booster's Tower. Now the problem is you can't get in here without a card key, so you'll have to find his partner boss, Knife Guy, who's all the way back at Booster's Tower at the top of one of the very top staircases. In order to get the bright card to get into the casino, you have to play his game and win it 12 times. Now it's not consecutive, meaning if you win 5 in a row and then lose the 6th one, it will just go down to 4, which means you'll just lose a point. Think of it as a point system. Once you get 12 wins or 12 points, you then will get the card. The game really isn't that difficult, you'll pick the left or right hand, but pay attention to the yellow ball. If you see it at the top at the last second before it disappears, that means it will be in his right hand, well technically according to Mario's view. But if you see the ball at the bottom or don't see it at the top, that means it's in his left hand according to Mario's view. It's a little harder to explain than to actually do it, but I promise you after a little bit you'll catch on and figure out what I'm talking about. It's not going to take long. Well, that is unless you want to go for the completionist medals at the end of the game. That will be for the end of this video. Now, let's talk about those lucky shells. Go to Nimbus Land, and after you defeat Valentina and clear out the area, if you go over here to the right side of the village, you can actually just walk out to an invisible path in the sky where you'll see a Bezo. If you talk to him, he'll say you caught him, and he'll give you some fertilizer. Now, you'll probably remember the same Bezo from Bean Valley. After you defeated Mega Smilax, he dropped a piece of paper, which if you walked up to it and collected it, it will be a seed, and you can take it. It's probably still there if you haven't done so. Now, go to Rose Town, and at the back of the village, there should be a new path open, which leads you into a lone house that you can then go inside and use the fertilizer and the seed on a pot, which will grow a giant vine after this old toad stops talking. You then can go up the vine in order to get the lucky shells, which is not only just equipment that all your team can wear, but also the most powerful weapon for Mario in the entire game. 
If you want something even more powerful than your regular signal ring, you can actually get an echo signal ring from Croco in Nimbusland in one of the huts. If you go talk to him, you can actually get one off of him, which makes finding secret hidden chests even easier. There's a secret chest at the castle that you can actually get in the very beginning of the game. When Toad is running through the corridor, you can actually jump on his head before getting to the end of the hall and then jump up onto the balcony part on the top of the door. If you missed this in the very beginning of the game, if you wait until later on in the game, you will find that the hall is full of toes that you can then jump on their heads in order to get up here. Once you recruit Peach in your team and go back to her room, for some reason you'll see her staring out her window. I don't know if that's actually her or not because Peach does appear in front of Mario, which is a second one, but she'll say stop peeking into other people's rooms if you try to look behind that blue chair again. In the castle still, if you go into the room with the lone bed, which is kind of like the end of the castle, you'll see Samus laying there. After you defeat Bellum is only when she'll appear, but you can actually see smoke coming out of her helmet as she's breathing and sleeping, and she mentions how she's resting up for Mother Brain. You can also eventually do this at Rose Town by going to the inn and finding Link in the bed that actually makes a sound effect when you approach him. If you go to Marymore, you can purchase the Nurture Ring and equip it to Princess Peach as it's the only one that it'll actually work on. Then make your way to the shop in Moleville to the blue toad at the left side of the counter and he'll sell you mysterious items. The second one will be a mystery egg for 200 coins. Buy that. Now while in battle, with Princess Peach's Nurture Ring equipped, have her use the mystery egg 10 times, and it'll look like nothing will happen. She'll hold the egg up, a little heart will appear, and it'll disappear. Then after 10 times, the egg will break and you will get the lamb's lure item, which allows you to turn an enemy into a lamb and they'll both fly away together for some reason. It's so strange. But we're still not done because if you use the lamb's lure 48 times, I kid you not, it turns into a new attack called the lamb attack, which actually combines tons of lambs together and flings them around the stage to turn turn every enemy into a lamb and then make them disappear. Back into the castle in Nimbus Land, if you talk to the guards, eventually one of them will say, Prince Mallow, you're such a crybaby, which is kind of hilarious. Also not a big one, but if you revisit the final room in the castle, you'll also find gold statues of all the partners in the party. You'll find a shop in Barrow Volcano that has some interesting things on the shelf at the back right. It has a Star Fox R-Wing and the Blue Falcon ship from F-Zero, and also the Fire Stingray, which was a racer used by Samurai. Goro, once again from F-Zero. Also, the design of the R-Wing that they picked out wouldn't necessarily come out until Star Fox Command on the DS, which resembles more the Bullfrog ship, which was Slippy's R-Wing in that game, and it's different than the regular R-Wing. Mellow has a move called Snowy, and it drops a giant snowman on the enemies and freezes them. It resembles Mr. Blizzard from past Mario games, such as Mario 64 or even Mario Kart, where he appeared in Frappe Snowland. When you're chasing the Axum Rangers outside of Barrel Volcano, it will actually play a remix of the original Super Mario Bros. Underground theme, and it's actually very reminiscent of Super Mario Sunshine, which would come in the future as you're chasing Bowser Jr. If you go to the inn in Nimbus Land and sleep on the dream cushion, you will actually get various different cutscenes that could play. Take a look. If you go back to Booster Tower after defeating Valentina, you can actually go to the top and peek through the door to see that Valentina actually landed on top of Booster Tower, and now they can have like this little interaction cutscene that you can watch. If you go to the lobby of Booster Tower on the desk, you'll see a little replica of the Magitech armor from Final Fantasy VI. There's an in-game monster list that you can pop up in your journal, which is kind of like a bestiary, showing you all the enemies and stuff that you fought. But did you know you'll get a green check by the enemies that you actually use 
used a Thoughtful Pecan, which is a special move used by Mallow to show what the weaknesses and strengths of that enemy is and also their health. But yes, you have to use the Thoughtful Peak on every single little last enemy in the game. That means duplications of the same enemy. That means if you're fighting a boss with like different segments, you have to use it on each segment, remakes of bosses, everything that you can possibly think of. So odds are you're going to miss a lot. And there are some that you just can't get back because you've only fought the boss one time. But if you miss any, go to Booster's Pass and you'll see this little alcove here. You can actually talk to a character that you can buy Thoughtful Peaks off of for three frog coins in order to fill out those random slots. And it will always fill out a new one for you. In Land's Inn, you'll find a cave at the bottom of the Donut Block mini game, and you can actually jump into it. You have to jump at a specific time, and I don't really understand how it works, but it leads you into a very long tunnel that actually has a hidden treasure, and it leads you all the way back to Caro's sewers from the very beginning of the game, which will lead you to a top portion to get another extra chest. Lots of the enemies in Bowser's Keep are his past minions, so if you have Bowser in the party, odds are they're going to run away, at least a lot of the time they do. One of Boo's attacks in the game will actually make a face that's reminiscent of the Boo's from Mario World. The more times you race and the more cookies you bet in these races in Yoster Island will grant you tons of Yoshi cookies. And what can you do with these cookies? Well, you can feed them to this baby Yoshi, of course, to get the big Yoshi. And if you feed this Yoshi tons more cookies, I think it's like over 10, he'll actually give you a special item out of an egg, which is pretty cool. You only need to complete four challenge doors in Bowser's Keep, but after you defeat the four challenge doors, and come back after defeating Exor, you can actually do the other two if you're lucky, and you get those other two. But in one of them, you'll actually do a Donkey Kong minigame, where there'll be a giant gorilla at the top throwing barrels. Yes, there's only around four doors that give you special equipment for your characters, but it's probably worth going through them all if you can, but it is random each time. But after you defeat and save the Red Kamek and go into an enemy challenge room, he will no longer be there to spawn the enemies in, they'll just kind of appear. During phase two of this smithy final boss battle, you'll notice some weird objects in the background, like lots of different scrapped versions of his new head and different pieces and parts that he's been working on. You can see Clay Morton's pogo stick Claymore in the background. You can also see the spear head piece for Spiritovich. And you can see Boyer's face in the background. These are probably prototypes of these enemies or different versions that he was working on, but yeah, it's pretty creepy. There's some extra songs that you can play at Tadpole Pond, like the Moleville Blues, and you can see on screen the notes that you need to line up for that song. That will reward you the tenor card, and you can also play the Monstro Town Star song. That will reward you the Soprano card. Now at the very beginning of the game, you would play the Frog Sage's Suite, which will give you the Auto card. And all these cards can be used in order to go to the Juice Bar and also get lowered prices for everything that's there. And also you can get a kind of put together song at the end. It'll sound like this. Great Guy has a game at the casino where you're pretty much just supposed to look in the opposite direction that he's pointing, which is just completely random. I recommend just keep looking in one direction, but you have to do this a whopping 100 times in order to get the Star Egg, which will deal a ton of damage to every single enemy on the battlefield after seeing a star dance routine and a bird fly by. It's pretty weird, but it can be useful. The Super Suit is one of the hardest things to obtain in this game. You have to have 100 consecutive jumps with Mario's jump special, which means you have to hit the A button at the perfect timing, and this can be very hard to do. Now, I found some useful things would be to plug in a controller and go to wired connection in order to make sure that you get the perfect inputs. I also liked using the actual switch itself in handheld mode because that way I knew that my inputs were being correct because there was no input lag with the television or anything like that. Something else I found to be useful 
useful that actually helped was after about 20 to 25 hits, I would go to the home screen and just kind of rest my fingers for a little bit, get up, move, get my mind off of it, and then resume. And I was able to jump back in and continue. And that's actually how I was able to get 100 hits. You can also do this on a jump resistant enemy, like anything with spikes or a prana plant where they don't budge and they don't move at all, which can help you to keep trying and practicing and get with that rhythm. But after a while, you will eventually get it. It just took me a couple of days of just learning the timing, the rhythm, and doing that pause trick and I was able to get it. But once you get 100 consecutive jumps, head over to Monstro Town and talk to the wolf enemy where he will reward you with the super suit, which is the most powerful gear in the game. Mario will be decked out. If you go to Seaside Town, you can purchase something called the Lucky Hammer. It has absolutely terrible attack damage, but that's not the reason why you'll wanna buy this thing. Buy it, equip it, and use it in battle, and every single time you defeat an enemy with it, you will get the lucky item, which will allow you to have a lucky roulette for a chance to double your amount of XP for that battle. If you go back to Monstro Town into the Goomba Hild shop, you can actually buy one item. It's just a mushroom, but it says that it recovers 30 HP but dot dot dot. So if you buy this and use it in battle, you'll actually gain 30 HP, but it will transform you into a mushroom, which is just like the goofiest item ever, but I thought it was pretty funny. It's actually possible to sell your bright card, which allows you to get into the casino. Go to Mary Moore and go to this old toad in the store and you can sell it for 100 coins. If you say no, he'll eventually go down to five frog coins he'll give you. If you say no again, he'll say, how about 10 frog coins? And you can also keep saying no until eventually that's about it. But if if you sell it for 10 for all coins or any of the other choices, you can actually eventually buy it back, but yeah, you can sell your casino card if you no longer want to go there. Just like that mouse told us earlier, you can actually bounce off of Wigglers for coins and you can do the same exact thing for the armored ants in the desert. After a while, you might even get a frog coin after consecutive bounces. There's a toad that you can find and talk to behind a house in Rose Town. He'll ask you if you've been to Yoster Island and also if you played the Goomba Thumping mini game. but just kind of chat with you about some things. That's really about it. If you go back to the Mushroom Kingdom, you'll see a toad within the inn, and he's actually got a Game Boy in his hands. You can keep talking to him and annoy him enough to the point where he'll tell you, do you want to buy this Game Boy? You can purchase it, and then you can actually play games on it by opening your menu and playing the Beetle Mania minigame. Did you know the background also depends on who's in the middle slot of your party? If it's Peach or Mallow, you'll actually get these cloud background. If it's Bowser or Gino, you'll actually get this Super Mario World themed background. Here's an incredibly small detail, but did you know that the J for the Jinx Dojo actually gets replaced with an M if you beat him in all of his challenges, you'll then become the owner technically of the dojo. Did you know if you time the Geno world down, you can actually deal 9,999 damage to an enemy, which is a very hard time button press. But did you know you can also one-shot Exor with this move as well? It's the only boss in the game that it's actually able to be one-shot, which is very interesting. So definitely give it a try if you haven't already. There's a secret boss in the game, and in order to fight him, you actually have to go on a trade quest. Go to Moleville, and it's your job in order to buy some fireworks so you can trade to this little mole for a shiny stone. Talk to this mole in the back of one of the houses and he will actually trade you fireworks for 500 coins. You can then give the fireworks to the little mole girl and she will give you a special secret stone. Take this stone back to Monstro Town and you can now open the black guarded doors which will lead you into a boss battle against Culix, which is a super strong boss battle. After you defeat Culix, it'll play the victory fanfare theme from Final Fantasy VI. Not to mention, this boss battle theme is the same exact boss battle theme from Final Fantasy IV. This 
This is a kind of cool reference and connection with the original game, because after you defeat Kulix, it would actually tell you that, you know, maybe in another place, in another time, we'll be enemies, or we'll fight again, or we'll fight in a 3D space and stuff like that. And it actually references what's to come when you fight him again in full 3D, but it's almost like a full circle. Like, the original game was hinting at a future appearance of this boss battle again. Like, this already happened in an alternate timeline or something. It's, it's kind of crazy if you think about it. It's like Nintendo knew there was going to be a remake over 15 years in the future. In the very beginning of the game, a Toad will get his wallet stolen by Croco, and you can return it to him and just be honest. But you can do some other things with it too if you're just a mean Mario. You can sell it in the store for 123 coins. You can even refuse to give it to him or just straight up told him that you sold it, which is just so cruel. You can actually purchase to stay in the most expensive room in Marymore, and you can go into the shower as well by going through these doors, and Mario will come out with a steamy red face. You can even hear him whistling the Super Mario Brothers theme while he's in the shower. If you sleep in the room overnight, there will be a cutscene of a bright light shining through the window, and Gino will actually be staring out the window and tell you that something happened at Star Hill. If you go, you'll find new pink stars that actually reference wishes from the bosses that you can actually rematch in the game after you complete the main game. One says that he's returned, having even greater power and wishes to see you once again, which is a reference to Kulix, now going into 3D. One wants a 1v1 duel, which might be Johnny, since he's having a 1v1 battle against Mario in the rematch. One talks about needing help with the cake, and it's referencing the second fight against Bunt. One says, my throat's all scratchy, make it stop, which is probably referencing Bellum. One says he wants the new master to show him new moves, which is you, and this is Jinx talking, back at the dojo in Monstro Town. One says, I hope this is my big break, which is referencing Punchinello being happy to see Bowser and perform in front of him. And the last one says, I've got something special to show off, which is probably Booster referencing his super train that he was building. If you go to Moleville, the toad in the corner will be selling tons of random items, and one of them will be a frying pan, which you can actually equip to Princess Peach as somehow her most powerful weapon. Take that as a smash easter egg, I guess, at least for the future in a weird way. Let's go back to that fancy hotel room in Marymore. If you pay to stay there and you actually sleep multiple nights and you don't have enough money to cover all those nights that you slept in there, you actually have to work off your debt, which is kind of crazy. You'll kind of be taking a person to their room and showing them off and also walking them out the door. It's kind of funny. You're like the new bellhop. You'll actually even get a tip from the toad, which is hilarious. If you go back to the Mushroom Kingdom, you'll see that little green toad and he's like running in a square for some reason in the courtyard. If you jump on his head and just sit there, eventually Mario will jump off, be dizzy, and fall down. If you go into the shop in the Mushroom Kingdom, you can jump on the back bookshelf and he'll actually tell you to get off of his shelf. The same thing happens if you try to jump on the cake in Marymore. They'll actually yell at you to get off, you're standing on the cake and call you a fool. Even though one of the bakers has their head in the thing. Back in Marymore, did you know you could actually jump on the organ and everybody else will jump and be surprised and it actually will play a sound effect. Also, why are the organ pipes big red lips? Now, we already talked about the thoughtful Pete guy in that hole in Booster's Pass, but if you actually jump behind him, you will jump into a hole that will trigger some event that actually covers up all the square holes on top of the canyon, so you can't fall down and, you know, get into conflict with an enemy. It's, it's strange, it's not really needed, but sure. After you hit the green switch in Booster's Tower, it will open up a brand new path in Booster's Pass, where you can go over here to the left into this tunnel, where you can cross these gaps and you'll run into a Sniffit. He wants to battle you in order to become Sniffit number four at Booster Tower. Now, the thing is, if you let him defeat you, this will actually come true. Now, this is some older footage from the original game from Cybershell on YouTube, who actually did this whole thing. It takes a very long time, so I didn't want to do it. But if you keep losing, you can keep coming back to this spot and fighting multiple different Sniffits, where they'll be number five, number six, and they'll all actually get jobs at the tower if you let them all defeat you. So they'll all be up there just glad that they beat you in order to get their jobs at the tower, but if you beat them, no one will be there. Also, one of them has a secret identity that says Maul and Paul will be proud. You can actually chase this down to find out that they come from Moville. So are Sniffits just regular enemies that has turned into a Sniffit? This is interesting. Did you know you can use the Yoshi cookie in battle? If you throw the Yoshi cookie up, Yoshi will come in and eat it, and then eventually come in and try to eat one of the enemies on stage, and if he does, he'll actually poop out an egg, which will grant you a special item. If you go to save your game at a save block, 
lock and you go to click on your profile and click no when it says overwrite the save data you can do this over 10 times you will get a special little animation from mario at the top left now, in order to get this animation after 10 tries you have to then hit yes he'll then do a weird pose at the top left like cross his legs and look strange or he'll do this really sad pose which is also just kind of funny now i don't have actual footage of this but it definitely works because i've seen different things and gameplay from the older version and everything pretty much stayed the same but anyways you know where to get fireworks back in moleville if you get fireworks from that mole with the green clothes if you buy two you will get a mushroom pattern in the sky if you buy three you'll get a fire flower pattern and if you buy five and beat the game you will get a star pattern there is a green frog coin in the pipe vault and a lot of people might not know how to get this thing because i definitely didn't because it involves a mechanic that you don't use the entirety of the game Yes, technically Mario can slide in this game. All you want to do is sprint towards it and right before you hit the hole, hold down on the control stick and Mario will actually slide under, which is so strange because once again, it's a mechanic and animation that's only used for this one spot. If you refuse to bring back Peach after Mary Moore and keep trying to leave, you'll get special dialogue where Peach says we should return to the Chancellor. You can say no and keep trying to leave and then the whole group will be like, what are you doing Mario? We're going to get charged for kidnapping, which is hilarious hearing that Mario is the one trying to kidnap the princess and not Bowser. In fact, Bowser will chime in and actually be upset because that's his job for kidnapping the princess. So yep, he's mad about it as well. Here's a weird one that everybody's always obsessed with. Yes, Boshi, you can actually see his feet. Yeah, it's the first time we can see a Yoshi's feet and they got like little dinosaur claws go crazy weird people out there. For those of you wondering where Luigi is, well, just watch the post-game credits and you'll see a classic style credits theme before switching over. And yes, Luigi is in charge of leading the parade, so he's technically in this game. When fighting the treasure chest named Kumyan, he eventually will shoot out a brand new type of enemy named Bahamut. He's actually a direct reference to one of the most prominent summons in the Final Fantasy series being Bahamut, but with one T. So yeah, it's like a Mario themed Yoshi style of dragon compared to the actual in game version, which looks like this. If you use Mallow's Thoughtful Peak on the Wizakoopa, it'll state Eep. Is that the baby from so long ago? Obviously referencing Yoshi's Island, which is kind of weird because it's not the same Magikoopa. It's not really Kamek because he's red. But honestly, it's a pretty good Easter egg. I can't even lie. Another purpose of the shiny stone is you can trade it to this mole with the yellow bow for a carbo cookie. You can then trade the carbo cookie for this mole in this barrel. And if you do it twice, she'll eventually leave the barrel, allowing you to go inside, warp yourself to minus waterfall to do the waterfall challenge mini game. So you can just jump in this barrel in order to trigger that mini game for now on. Once you play through the game again, after doing all the boss rematches, you will see a difference in these cutscenes. For instance, all the bosses that you rematch will appear in these cutscenes. The two Baker Koopa Troopas will attend Booster and Valentina's wedding. Jinx, his Koopa Troopa student, and Culix will appear in the Monstro Town scene. Punchinello will now be hired by Bowser and helping out with his crew to rebuild his castle. And Bellum will be in Tadpole Pond now. Here are different outcomes when you fight Cloaker and Domino. For instance, if Domino is the one that survives the fight, you will be fighting Mad Adder. If Cloaker is still alive, you will be fighting Bad Adder, which is the same snake boss, it's just with different names. They will also have different fusion moves. For instance, Domino's will be more magic based and Cloaker's will be more physical attack based. Also, in case you were wondering, if you defeat both of them at the same time, Domino will always be the one that attaches to the snake. Right after the first time you try to take whatever was behind Peach's throne chair, you can actually talk to the toad outside of her room and he'll even accuse you of stealing things. And you can even say, no, you didn't. And he'll say, do not lie to me. You will occasionally see a Lakitu holding a shy guy at the end of a fishing line. If you defeat the shy guy four times, you'll be granted a mushroom that restores all your health and pretty much all your stats. Going back to Peach's throne room again, you can talk to the imposter Peach by the window and you'll find out that it's Peach's granny, which is that old toad that's just for some reason impersonating peach i don't know there's a pretty neat trick that you can do in caro's sewer by getting to the top part of the sewer early all you have to do is jump as you come in contact with the boo as if you're jumping on top of him and then run away from the battle then you'll be able to spawn on what is like an invisible hard surface which allows you to jump back up to the top part and you can get some stuff early even though it just leads you into a dead end which you can't really do anything from here if you stand on the frog sage's table and talk to him, he'll tell you that it's rude to stand on his dining table. 
finally, for the last couple, we'll be talking about challenges. So if you go to your player report in your journal, you can see your minigame records and your casino records. You can be rewarded a golden medal beside all of them if you reach the following criteria. The Midas River minigame, you need at least 81 coins. You need at least 25 points in Gooba Thump. You need a time under 2 minutes 16 seconds in the minecart game. You need 10 plus beetles in Beetle Race. You need to get under 11 seconds in the Paratroopa minigame. You need to get over 4 million points in Beetle Mania. You need to get 50 plus games ahead in the juggling game, 50 plus wins ahead in the memory game, and 100 plus wins ahead in the look the other way game. A lot of these are just going to be trial and error, and it's just going to take a long time to find the optimal way to finish these, and just also a lot of grinding, which is going to take a long time, especially in the casino games. But some of these I can actually give you some key help with. For instance, the minecart game, you don't need to slow down when you hit some slight turns like these. You can just go full speed and use your mushrooms on straightaways as much as you can, only slow down on these super tight bins. There's also a couple of crucial shortcuts to help you absolutely shred some time. You can use a mushroom on the straightaway and actually skip the track completely. Just make sure you slow down at the end when you skip it or you'll fly off. There's also a quick section where you can make a quick left right here and jump over to the next part. Those should definitely help you out a lot, and the rest is just kind of trial and error, rinse and repeat. Trust me, I know 4 million on the Beetle minigame sounds pretty impossible, but I promise you it's a lot easier than it seems. Get into the corner and just sit for a while and let the shells fill up on the screen. Once there is enough on screen, don't wait too long or they'll start to disappear. Go ahead and fire one star, and all the surrounding red stars that shoot out of the one shell that you shot will bounce off the others for combo attacks. So all you have to do is shoot one star and you will get tons of combo points, trust me. Also, grab as many hearts as you can as they come down, but don't go out of your way and end up killing yourself trying to get one of these things. Also, the more you get hit, the more times you have to press the A button or any button on the controller to get up. So the key is to press all four buttons as fast as you can all at the same time because each button counts as an individual input, which means you have to get hit a ton of times to not be able to stand up at all. Just keep repeating this process and be patient and you should be able to rack up tons of points. Remember, shoot one star at a time, let the shells explosion kill the rest of the shells. The paratrooper minigame really isn't that bad, it's just about going fast and you can actually jump before a certain paratrooper reaches his destination. If you just follow this and just kind of repeat it, you can easily get under 10 seconds. And every time you get under 10 seconds, you'll actually be rewarded 5 for all coins. So if you want to farm those coins, this is an easy way to do so after you learn the timing. Woo! And that is pretty much every single little detail and fact and easter egg within Super Mario RPG remake on the Nintendo Switch. Of course, there's probably still some small little things that I've missed and completely, you know, skipped over, but that was pretty much as much as I can find across the entire internet. I scoured and I wrote down every single thing I could find, and this was pretty much it. But thank you so much for tuning in. This video took probably almost a month of preparation to finally get out. Uh, so please make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy videos like this and if you learned something new today. Also let me know if there's any other details that I may have missed down below. And please leave a like and subscribe before you head out. And I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.